little by little where people are seeing what's going on and we're trying to right the wrong. Let us understand that we are at a dangerous yet exciting moment in the history of this country. Any time an administration demonizes people who are running for their lives, trying to find refuge in America, that means that they are operating in a mode of despair. Que somos abuela, pero tenemos unas voces, unas voces que hoy van a ser escuchadas. Hoy caminaron, hoy los, ustedes vienen caminando tantas millas. This is all a part of the same agenda that attacks all of our communities. The fact that this detention center may house children whose parents have already been deported is unacceptable. Study American history and you will discover that one of the essential tricks that mad people use is they separate families. This is my third or fourth one. Every time I hear people are gathering here, I come by and I just look at the place with nostalgia. And I was a children's counselor. This was a facility for homeless people here in Houston. And I used to work as a counselor for the children that live here. So kids used to get out of the bus stop right there on that street, about 50 of them every day. And my coworkers and I will come and get them, line them up, and we will get them inside the facility. We'll feed them a snack, but we'll help them with their homework and then we will just share the word of God with them and provide them with an after-school activity for five years. And now, this is completely the opposite. What good could turn out from detaining and basically jailing kids? I'm from Mexico. I came with my parents and we came here legally. And for the record, us legal immigrants are not angry. They can come here with, in whatever way they can to survive. They have the right to survive. Yeah. We all do. The time has arrived that if you are not comfortable with seeing and living around people who look different from you, you may want to reconsider living on the planet Earth. They're escaping violence. They're escaping being kidnapped. They say, we don't have a chance here. We'd rather risk it all because there's no chance here and there's no hope. They start dropping off the individuals after 8 o'clock. And so sometimes they don't get to leave tonight. They won't leave till tomorrow. And so they don't have a place to stay because the bus station closed at, at 11 p.m. And I'm being told that a group of nine men just arrived and they have not had dinner. Sometimes it's a one-day trip, sometimes it's a two-day trip, sometimes it's a three-day trip. But we try to put at least four bottles of water and, all, and the munchies that'll get him by because if he only has five dollars, he's gonna have to live on this. This little guy from Cuba had five dollars and he asked me, well, how do you get all this? 
are you from a church group? I was like, no, we just asked friends to donate. And he said, well, I want to donate. And so he gave me $5. And I said, well, I'm going to give it to this young man that said he has zero. Isn't that something? So as I love it, they're helping each other. And this guy couldn't believe it because that's the only five hours now he, he has. This little guy broke my heart yesterday because they were detained him and his father. And it, he was released and not the father. Buena suerte. Hasta luego. Dios los bendiga. So we say good luck and God bless you. Yeah. They have a long trip. Yeah. If we're not there, who's gonna who's gonna help? And so sometimes you get that energy because you know that there might not be anybody here. And so that was motivates all of us to come out here every night and help. Yeah. I've been working with separated parents for um, a little over two months now. It was really hard for me to take on every case. Personally, I couldn't do that. It was just impossible. But I ended up with about 30 cases um, myself. I'm waiting here because immigration released her. Her name is Ingrid, and um, she um, comes from Guatemala. And she has a little boy that is uh, nine years old. And she's been in detention for about uh, a little over two months. Um, and uh, finally, she passed her credible fear screening, got the positive um, screening, uh, and immigration decided they would go ahead and release her uh, today. So they said they brought her here, um, but she doesn't know anyone here, and she doesn't have any money. So I figured it would be best to come here, try to find her, so she could have a place to stay until we can get her son back. Okay. Si usted para dónde va? Cuando se llegue a Oklahoma, usted tiene que encontrar un abogado o una organización de inmigración que le ayude a trasladar su hijo. Solo dije, Dios, no dejes que muera acá en el desierto. Dame otra oportunidad, dame otra oportunidad para vivir. Eh, problemas políticos. Problemas políticos es cuando yo no, cuando usted no apoya a su partido a un partido y otro partido lo hace la obliga a decir no tú vas a apoyarme acá si no pues ahorita mismo te doy te elimino me eliminan y me pueden eliminar hasta mi familia entonces entonces por eso me vine porque yo amo yo amo a mi familia yo amo a mi familia y la verdad Tengo seis bebés, hijos míos, y los amo a ellos. Y yo no quiero, yo no quiero que ellos los vayan a eliminar por mi culpa. Yo me vengo. There's no getting away from the fact that we're taking people that are distinguished by the fact that they're from certain countries and they're of a certain race and we're putting them in a place on the border away from where everybody is. And I, I can't help but think about how, you know, the people of the t little town of Auschwitz have no idea 
uh, what was going on. That's what they claimed. They didn't know. They saw people going in. They didn't know what was going on. The trains went in. Well, lots of people who come by here are surprised to find out that there's a children's prison over there. And it's easy, to not, it's easy not to know. Um, it doesn't look like the operation that it is, uh, of the size that it is. Well, most of these kids are from uh, Central America. They don't have a mother or a father with them. They happen to be with a, an aunt or an uncle, an older brother or an older sister. They'll be separated. There are cases where somebody's been in there for six months. 60 days is not uncommon and 90 days is not uncommon. These kids are in there for lengths of time that are going to do them permanent damage. You know, my presence out there is, uh, is to attract attention, um, both, both from the people there, but also from, uh, the, from the nation as a whole. I want everybody to see me out there and watch me watching. And I want it to inspire them to come and do the same thing. This is a place that will bend to pressure. The reason it's filling up like this is that other places are bending to pressure. And the reason this place is being substituted for those places is because nobody's here saying, no, not, not here, not on my watch, not in my town, not in, not in my region, not in my name. I know that this place could be shut down if uh, enough people came out here. that over the next week there's more of a light shined on this darkness here and that people across the country will then start to rise up and politicians are going to start to rise up hopefully more so than they have before. just need to let the people know that this can't be a secret it's a huge secret you know I just have to question why it's a big secret. Here hold this let's not lose this one. I just, I can't fathom the idea, how stressful and how, you know, just bewildering it must be for these kids to be out here without their families, to not even know where you are. We need to fight for the kids, or how long you'll be there, or when you will see your family again, or if you'll return home, not return home. We're just not sure what to write yet. You're not sure what to write? Well, take your time and think so. They were literally yanked from everything they knew. They have no comfort, no parents' arms, no words of wisdom, no words of comfort. Yeah. If you were the kid that was afraid coming in, what would you like to see somebody else telling you? What would make you feel comforted? I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Especially when we as parents look at our own kids. <laughs> This is the day that Very good. That's a good one. All right, there you go. She's right here. I like that. We have sound. Yay! Can you hear us? Yes, I'm solo! No, I'm solo!
When Mary and Joseph were knocking door to door and they were rejected, we have done the same thing to them. What really, really keeps me awake is that we look up to Tornillo as a model to replicate in other places. I received a call from a Guatemalan family who said, our child is inside Tornillo. That broke my heart. To be able to put a name and a face to this, to what we're doing, and to know there's a child inside there who knows that we will be here. And now tons of them who have heard us. That's powerful. We made this happen today and it may seem like something small, but I, I think and I'm sure that to them it was something huge. We show them love. I just wanted to share that, guys, so that it gives you what it gave me. First sorrow, but then inspiration to keep on going. Just keep on fighting. Don't give up. Because they need us. They do. As of Tuesday, they have no longer accepted children here. And if he's able to hold strong and not accept any more children, by mid-January, Tornillo will shut down. That, that is because of you, everyone who's been out here. Now listen, let's not take his word for it. Let's not take my word for it. Let's continue to show up here so that we can witness with our own eyes, testify in our own words back to our fellow Americans what is happening here. Que esos cantos no lo olviden fácilmente. Solo le pido a I came yesterday, the security guard grilled me asking me a billion questions like I was a criminal, what my intentions were, were here, but once I told them that I was going to join the small protest group, he, he directed me on where to go, 
and um, I tried to ask him on insight on what was going on at the facility because I, as you can see it's very secretive other than the groups of uh, employees walking by you have no clue what's going on here the, it's just secluded so that is a red flag for me so I just wanted to ask him simply hey what kind of facility is this like can you even tell me like who you work for and he would not tell me The first time that I found out what was happening here was actually in June, when the Trump uh, administration started dividing the children from the parents. And then uh, they started adding more and more kids in uh, Homestead. 1,600 is the number that we keep hearing from, uh, from the people who go inside. They've been hired. Take a look. Are these the newbies? These are newbies. They do say that a building capacity of 2350, which is why they're doing all the hiring. Most of the kids who are coming here, who are unaccompanied, they have family here. The government wants to punish these kids. That is their strategy, to end immigration. Make it miserable enough for them so that this is the last place they'd ever want to come. Doesn't work, but that's what they think. And in a place like this, it's even worse. You know why? Profit. Caliburn, comprehensive health services, profit. They're making money off of these kids. We wanted to shut down and put the children with their relatives. When they ask me why, it's because I think it's not right to be, you know, to, to, to don't do nothing. I think it's a bad yeah, idea it's all to stay while the injustice outside. The kids know they're not alone and they know that people are advocating. growing every day. I mean, I've been out here two days, but there's about five more people than there were yesterday, and hopefully tomorrow in the coming weeks, we can build a strong campaign to get this place shut down. If it was able to be done in Tornilla, it can definitely be done in Homestead. What I would like is for every, everybody in the entire country to show up. We're here to say we, we're opposed to remain in Mexico. We're opposed to a policy that basically has shut asylum down. We're going to protest against those courts there because they're not really courts. A court is a place where you try to make justice for people. What's going on in there is an effort at inflicting injustice on people. They're told no. They're just told no. There are people who have been traumatized enough to leave their homes. They've been traumatized on their journey here. They are sent to suffer, to be tortured here across the river. We're connected with the campus ministry at KU. We came down here really to see what the situation was. Because in Kansas, a lot of the information we get is second hand or even third hand, and because of that, there's a lot of misinformation. Coming down here and seeing it for myself has made a huge difference in how I interpret what's going on down here. The first thing that I noticed were the kids. Being in an area where your only protection is a zipper. How are you going to stop people from taking your kids? How are you going to stop people from extorting you? We're going to stay here until the people on the other side of the river are allowed to cross. And we're going to help if we're needed. We're going to help in the relief effort whenever they call on us. When we started, I think it was about 20 people that, because of metering, they were waiting to cross. So we were feeding them. 
And then MPP started and we have 2,200 on the other side of the bridge. It was very difficult because we couldn't take the tents fast enough. We would, we would take a hundred and by the time next weekend, it, there was a, we needed another hundred and we needed another hundred because it was just heartbreaking to see the people that had to sleep in the street. This is what we call our free store. We bring all our supplies here. Any of the people from the tent know that they can come get here, get anything they need for free. We, toiletries, toilet paper, sleeping bags, diaper, whatever they need. No tienes unas chanclitas para niños que se le rompieron, así más o menos de tu tamaño. That might fit in. A ver, te quedan esto. Sí. Okay, perfecto. Son tuyos. We were paying for porta potties. We, were, we paid to bring showers in, water system. They also installed water heaters two weeks ago in there, so they can have hot water for bathing. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. We have people coming in from all over the country to feed people. My name is Sharon. I'm from Addis Israel Synagogue in Washington, D.C. Tonight we've um, arranged for a local restaurant to provide the food this evening and we're serving. Tomorrow we're preparing the meal, bringing it over on wagons and we're gonna be doing the same thing tomorrow night as well. I don't understand how anybody can stand here for more than 30 seconds and watch the first child walk through this line and think that this is okay. I, I can't wrap my head around how this can be allowed to go on. It's a hard, sword to bear when they believe so much in me. And I, I'm not the decider. I try my best. I, that's all I can do is try my best. Where's that to mommy? Ay, como te había extraño. Como estas? Feliz año. Hola, como estas? Bien, bien, feliz año. And surely I don't always, you know, come out with my best, but I try. Rodney, acabo de estar. ¿Cómo estás? Feliz año. ¿Qué onda? Feliz año. How you doing? ¿Cómo está mi vida? ¿Cómo está, papi? Ay, daddy, ¿cómo estás? Y la verdad, me espero recibirlo este mes, más o menos. On the weekend, there's usually just a lot of people that have questions. Pero lo que quería hacer en, en todos los casos. It's very difficult to win. Pedir cases that, you know, two years ago would have certainly been cases we could win. We, we don't really have a chance anymore. And that's a hard conversation to have with people, especially when, you know, they may have seen people that came before them, you know, won and maybe had similar facts or similar circumstances, and then now they can't win, you know? Okay. Feliz año. Okay. Okay. Hay una confusión, pero yo creo que ya la había este, aclarado con tu llave. ¿Qué tienes para estar aquí en México? Se vence el 13, ¿verdad? 14. Seis meses, seis meses y medio. Excelente. Viviendo en este lugar, en este puente. Mi padre trabaja en Rehabilita Jóvenes. His father is the pastor of the Angelico Mennonite Church. His father works on rehabilitating youth and gets them to change their mind and make them Christian and puts them in programs to clean the local parks and to paint the schools and help in the community and for the community. But so because his father was trying to bring peace to the area and, and save young men, gang members sent uh, people to his aunt and uncle's house where they killed both the aunt and uncle in front of the six children. <laughs> no puedo. These are pictures of the house riddled with bullets. It's a bunk bed. 
and the kids were up there while they killed the father and the mother. The gang members showed up at the funeral and told them that everyone that was there was on the list and that they were all mixed. This is the funeral and the gang members he's talking about are the ones standing back there. They finished the funeral and they immediately abandoned their homes, abandoned everything and just left. He has three kids, three, three niños, right? So he first went to Tapachula when he arrived in Mexico, which is on the uh, southern border. And he was there for two months trying to get permission to work because they didn't have any money. In the main plaza of the town where they were living, he saw the, the head gang guy from Honduras was there. And so he just dropped everything there and came this way. So they came in buses, they would stop and work, a day's work to get more money to come, or they would beg for people to give them money to, to have enough to finally make it to Reynosa. Ya fuiste a la corte allá, sí, en la Carpa sí, Blanca. Sí, fui a la segunda corte. Ya fui a la primera, la segunda, y tengo la tercera para el 25 de marzo con mi familia. He's got the third one in March. ¿Qué pasaría si regresarías a Honduras? Eh, posiblemente los mataría. Probably kill us all. These are all death certificates from all the family members that were killed. There's a daughter crying over the mother's body. That's the aunt they killed when she was alive. So do you think with all this evidence, the judge says, no, 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 go back to Mexico. With all this, I don't understand. So what he wants is to tell the American people and the president to please give us an opportunity. We're not coming to ask for a handout. We are coming to work. And what at most that I want is an education for my children. We're human beings just like everyone on the other side of the bridge. He says, I can't sleep at night at all watching over my kids to make sure they sleep. It's so dangerous here. Siento que no le toca la corte ese día. Este, a lo mejor me, da, me va a decir que, 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 que se presenta bueno, como a las 9, 10 de la mañana en lugar de madrugarse. Muchas okay. gracias. Bueno, siempre. Gracias. Gracias a Chao. Feliz año. Ok. ¿Y las niñas ya se fueron? I, 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 I go up and down with like, emotions and you know trying to, to process things because you know, you're exposed to so much so much ugly things. But there's this theory or philosophy about light and and love. And despite I think all of the darkness and hate that's out there, um, the appropriate response to all of it is to shed, show light and, and love. They may be able to outmaneuver, but I'm a long distance runner. They're sprinting. They're gonna peter out. We discovered in the course of witnessing here what's going on at the airports, which is the loading of human cargo for deportation. We're standing among buses that are loaded with humanity. We waved at the people who can't wave back because they're in shackles. You guys keep coming back, and you tell me I can't wait to come back because my heart failed and I can't wait to come back to hug those people and tell them that they're human. They're not cockroaches. They're human beings that deserve to live. We had the chance to save thousands of people in the 1930s and the 1940s. 
when immigrants were knocking on our doors and we turned them away and we promised and we hated ourselves for doing it and we said never again and it's happening all over again. We have the chance to save lives and we're saying no, close the doors. We said we would not repeat history. What happened to this country? It needs to stop. Metering needs to stop. MPP needs to stop. And it needs to stop when? Now! now.